Well, certainly one of the big announcements, I think the biggest announcement in my world at CES was from the UHD Alliance, which is a consortium of companies, both t uh, TV manufacturers and content companies, studios, uh, and even distribution companies like Netflix, uh, all came together and came hammered out a, a standard uh, for ultra HD, uh, high dynamic range, really, and wide color gamut. Uh, in fact, uh, somebody in the chat room, uh, I think it was JJ to the 4884, was asking about UHD Premium, which is the name that they gave to this particular uh, standard. And I think we have uh, a, a slide on that. It's actually out of order number five. And let's take a look at that. And uh, how was the CTA involved in that process, or were you? Yeah, so the uh, the Ultra HD Alliance is its its own group of companies. We have a liaison relationship with them, so um, it's probably not surprising that our, our members are also members of the Ultra HD Alliance. And uh, we had our already existing definition for Ultra HD, 4K Ultra HD, that we just talked about. Now, CTA's existing definition and logo requirements were built around resolution. When we did that, there were not agreements on high dynamic range yet. In fact, not even uh, HDMI really didn't have a standardized way of transferring that uh, HDR metadata, the extra information you need. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have coordinated those conversations by, uh, you know, just exchanging as we've continued to work on definitions. So we knew that the Ultra HD Alliance, they said um, at the previous CES, they announced that, uh, their formation and stated they wanted to work on a premium specification. So, I mean, that's the key. They, they built it right into the name, which is a, a premium viewing experience. And to your earlier point, uh, it addresses <clears throat> more than just resolution. So it's high dynamic range and uh, wide color. So it's a full uh, rendering spec. Mm -hmm. Um. And it also, as I understand it, includes immersive audio, though that wasn't talked about very much. Uh, yeah, so I think they wanted to encompass the whole uh, the, the whole experience. That was, that was true from the very start. And I think this also reflects the fact that the content companies like Fox were involved. And so it was a partnership between uh, content and display manufacturers. And uh, I mentioned the word rendering. So that's one of the key aspects is they... Um, you know, there's interoperability kind of standards, which, you know, s say th this stuff works together. In other words, the input of the TV can handle uh, certain signals or whatever. In this case, they wanted to say that the, the picture and the audio that the consumer experiences uh, meets a certain quality. So we think of that as a rendering specification. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, the CTA recently published its own high dynamic range standard, uh, how does that integrate with or relate to uh, the UHD Alliance UHD premium standard? Yeah, so we uh, we did our work slightly ahead. So I think we released ours in September of last year. And uh, it so it attacks actually the interoperability problem we were talking about. We, we knew there would be HDR TVs coming out on the market. We knew they'd be announced through the fall and especially at CES. <laughs> and we wanted um, to be able to say that when CTA talks about an HDR compatible TV, we mean the following. And that's what our definition is about. So it, it's about, uh, you know, it specifies what a compat an HDR compatible TV needs to be able to handle on the input and we're silent on the rendering capability and that's sort of left to things like the ultra hd alliance and their premium specification mm. <laughs> when you and i were talking offline uh i found it very interesting you you sort of drew a, a, com a comparison with say the cell phone carriers uh, and they have to kind of be involved in both ends transmission reception rendering everything uh, whereas here in this particular case, we've, we've got different organizations uh, dealing with the different parts of the signal chain. Uh, is, is that likely to cause more problems with, without a single body dealing with the whole thing? Well, we've been, I, I think it's just a, 
a fact of life, if you will, with the difference between television, which, you know, is not, uh, just, you don't buy your products the same way you buy a cell phone or a smartphone. Uh, so the, what, you know, what we were talking about is that in the case of, uh, a wireless carrier, um, they specify and acquire the devices that the consumer ultimately buys. So they're, they're tested and they know the end to end capabilities and they're, they're highly specified and controlled. Uh, so, so we have this kind of vibrant market of TVs being sold directly to consumers, but all that coordination happens in the background. That's why there are standards organizations like, uh, like CTA. So we handle, uh, you know, uh, people look to us for the standards related to the, the end devices uh, SMPTE, S-M-P-T-E handles the production stuff. And then, um, uh, SCTE or cable labs will work on cable distribution standards and ATSC works on the broadcast portion. But we, there are a lot of overlapping conversations and, uh, liaisons, but you know, when, when there's a particular problem to be solved, uh, like the UHD Alliance, I mean, they set out, um, to, uh, to make sure there was a, a certain level of experience. And that, that conversation happened among, among a group of like-minded uh, content creators, some technology companies, and then TV manufacturers.